Yo, if you had one shot, one moment, one opportunity to walk anywhere you ever wanted, would you capture it or would you let it slip? What's up amigos? Welcome back to another video with me and Tom, Tom Outdoors. Check him out. Um, we are in between Eden Bridge and Lingfield at the moment um, at Kern's Farm, Cern's Farm, we don't really know how to pronounce it. Um, and it's the starting point of the Eden Valley Walk. So it's the second walk in the Ra Kent Ramblers Association guidebook, um, their West Kent River Walks. Um, it's a relatively short, long distance walk, this one, it's 15 miles. Um, it seems, it just follows like the River Eden, which sort of meanders through fields and zigzags back and forth everywhere. Um, so it does, starts where we are here and it ends in Tunbridge by Tunbridge Castle, uh, which is where the next walk starts, which is the Medway Valley Walk. <coughs> um, quite excited about this one. For two reasons one the weather's lovely not too hot not too cold and secondly i've got a brand new tent to show you um in fact i'm not going to tell you what it is we will just get it out when we find somewhere to camp um, and i'll show you what it is uh, hopefully we can camp somewhere around heaver castle uh, which is famed for being the residence of Anne Boleyn, who obviously married king henry the eighth um, so hopefully we can find a nice spot around there uh, in the woods somewhere. Um, there is a pub there as well, so we'll probably stop in there, have a load of froth off of a cold one, if you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, don't really, don't really know what else to say. So I'll make it up as I go along. We'll see you along the way. So you walking today? You walking tomorrow? Hey. I don't know how well the camera will pick this up, but all the blossoms come off the trees and lit this bit of woodland. It kind of looks like it's it's like snow on the ground, uh, and there's a bit of waterway in there, and it's all landing on top of the water. It looks, it looks quite beautiful. And here is our first glimpse of the River Eden and across this bridge and then into a grass airstrip. So unfortunately, what we think is the old doorway here has been bricked up, so we can't get in. But the inside looks like it's pretty good condition still. Well, obviously, because no one can get in. I can't really, can't really show you inside.
Yeah. All right, so I've climbed on top of the pillbox. You've got the better view of the, the airstrip here. There's a couple of lads on motorbikes over there. And the top of the pillbox looks like it's been turned into a helipad. Pretty cool. So, whether or not people actually land helicopters on here, I don't know. They're thinking it might have been an old airstrip from the war, maybe a dummy airstrip with a pillbox next to it to try and confuse the Germans. Uh, we haven't really found anything out, out about it, but... Right, I'm going to head off in that direction. But we've just noticed this thing on the side of the pillbox, E-A-B-M, with an arrow. If anyone knows what that is, please let us know in the comments, because we have not got a Scooby-Doo. So we found what we think is the location of a place called Devil's Den. Uh, Devil's Den was like a stately home with a moat around it. Uh, we've got a little bit of river behind us and then as you can see here there's a bit of stagnant still water which looks like it sort of curves around this, this mound of earth. Um, so we think this is the location of where it is, it's quite hard to tell on the map. Uh, we'll, I think we do walk around the edge in a minute so we might see more, it might open out. Uh, but yeah, we might be wrong, don't know, but this is where we think it is. Thank you. We've uh, made it into Eden Bridge now. We've got the old stone bridge over the river over there. And fire station. And we're gonna do a left here. And then do a right at the pub. And we should then be back going out of Eden Bridge back through the fields along the footpath. The first bridge was built in the reign of Henry VII. The present one is dated 1836. Records from 1595 show there were originally 12 wardens of the ancient Great Stone Bridge Trust. The two names are George Landridge and Augustus Cork. They are inscribed onto the bridge. Over the centuries, the trust built up funds which are used in the good, for the good of the parish and is still actively benefiting Eden Bridge today. So I made it to Eden Bridge Parish Church, dedicated to St. Peter and St. Paul. Uh, unfortunately, we can't go inside to see the inside of it. It's all locked up, so it's a shame, but we can see the magnificent building and the structure of the outside and all the graves. A church is said to have existed on this site since Saxon times, 
over 1,000 years ago, probably replacing an even earlier pagan place of worship. The present building has been remodelled several times over the centuries since its Norman origins 900 years ago. It was Pope Gregory the Great in 590 who recommended the churchyards as burial places so that worshippers might pray for the dead and remember their own mortality. Until well into the 18th century, only the wealthiest people could afford stone monuments. Hey Tom! You walk it today? Can't do it. What happened to your voice? Retake. You walk in today? You're walking tomorrow. <laughs> Right, we're heading out of Eden Bridge now and going to be en route to Hever and to the pub. Hey! <laughs> Get the drinks in, son! <laughs> to the battle cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> Back scratcher. Yeah. 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 Look, it's stopped around us now. <laughs> Never work with children or animals. Right. Along the path, or just off the path, we spotted something in the distance. So we thought we'd come check it out. And it is a Cold War ROC post. There's the ventilation shaft there. And there's the structure for an oil lit tower in which they used to spot planes from. Potential enemies dropping bombs. And what good place to have it, because it's a view all over the valley here. So we're gonna go over and have a look. Do you want me to do any talking on here? Huh? Might narrating for you. Right, I'm filming for Luke as you guessed, and uh, he's going down first, he's braving it. Apparently there's loads of ants. Talk on. Talk on. on. You look like a mole. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Could be anything down here. Could be, well, oh, there's stinks. a massive spider behind oh, you. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> oh, mate, stinks of shit as well. That spider is quite big. Oh, shut up, Tom. I thought you didn't mind them. I don't mind them. Oh, it proper stinks. Can I have the torch? Yeah, go on. Here you go. Hang on, let's turn it on. Okay. Hold it a sec. Yeah. 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 Oh, don't do that. It's fucking right above me head. We could bite you. Yeah, and then I'll turn into Spider Man. Hey. <laughs> Oh, it really smells of crap. Shit. I feel like I'm on the Fear Factor or something. <laughs> Is this the first one you've done? Yeah. Brilliant. Right, yeah, just to just. It's quite wet down there, actually. Yeah, it's probably where it's leaked in it, so. Yeah. Oh, I can't walk tight anymore. Right, Let's see what I can see. So yeah, it's just a bunker down here, stable of water. Just as like a container. <laughs> and that was obviously a toilet or something. But yeah, say hi Tom. Oh. Right, nothing else to see really, so. Alright, let's go. I'm gonna go back up. Let me see if we can see the spider. There he is, look. Whack-a-mole. <laughs> the 
I don't know if I've got you in shot or not. There he goes. Well, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? So we've just left the RSC post behind over there. Uh, met two really cool people that were interested in sort of urban exploring. Uh, urbexes. Um, they're really like sort of happy that they found that in the field, as were we. Uh, we've left them there, they're exploring. They've subbed to our channel, each of us. So thanks guys, if you see this, you. nice to meet you. Uh, enjoy the rest of your exploring. Um, yeah, so we are heading sort of this direction-ish towards Heaver now. And unless there's something really cool along the way, we're probably not gonna, I'm probably not gonna feel much. Um, <laughs> we've only done like four miles or something <laughs> we've, today. <laughs> we've done nothing, honestly. <laughs> it feels like we've been walking for days. And part of that four miles was going up and down that ladder in the ROC post. <laughs> so, yeah. but no, that's what it's all about. And then uh, we're we'll gonna, to got the main bit of the walk tomorrow by the looks of it. <laughs> I've, I've got to be back by like, what time did she say? Four? Two? No, two, I think. Two? Right. Say two, be on the safe side. Don't mess with Katie, people. Yeah, don't mess with Honestly. Katie. She's going to be there and waiting. She'll so have you strung up by the large of your testicles, honestly. <laughs> so, you, yeah. Your life won't be worth living. <laughs> I think it's going to be an early start tomorrow. So, but yeah, if we're, we're not too far from Heaver, so it means we could probably just go and chill out for a bit and relax this evening. Yeah. Have some grub, have some beers, enjoy our lives. Cool, right, we'll see you along the way. Adios. Got lost again, waffling. This uh, path's not really well signposted at all. Um, literally no hint of where to go, what direction to sort of travel in. You've got, got to keep watching the map, look out for landmarks, things like that. The map doesn't actually look like it's to scale either, so it's hard to tell how long you've got to walk down a road or a path. Um, so we overshot where we wanted to be by quite a bit. Uh, so I found sort of a route sort of going back onto a road which then hopefully we can pick up the footpath that we're supposed to be on again which leads to Heaver train station uh, <laughs> get the map out is what we should have done but me and Tom waffling away and uh, things like this happen but hey it's a lovely day anyway um, the pub's in Heaver, so we can sit there and have something to eat, or a, lot, a snack at least, uh, and a drink. Uh, the time now is 20 past five, so we've still got like four hours light, daylight. Um, but of course we've got to leave Heaver, find the woodlands, find a spot to camp, make sure it's okay to camp there, so we won't get caught. Uh, so, and then set up so you know that four hours of daylight actually isn't isn't that long it depends how long we sit in the pub for as well <laughs> uh, i think i'll just have a soft drink and then save my beer in my bag for later on tonight but we are seeing some cool views along the way so it's this way now and should be in heaver in the next sort of 20 minutes or so This is an unusual part of the walk. Goes through someone's garden. 
proof is in the pudding. This is the first actual sign we've seen so far on the whole walk. There it is. There's the pub. Let's sit down, rest our feet for a bit. Welcome back, minions, you peasants. No, I can't say that. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like you just did. Welcome back. We're chilling out in the pub garden at Henry VIII. Neva, got a nice San Miguel. Tom's got half a pint of some cider. Orchard view. Yeah. In a shepherd neem glass. And a pint of coke. Nice and a slice. And we've got crisps. Literally the best crisps I've ever tasted. Mm. They're really nice. Yeah, I think it's because we're hungry, we've been walking, everything tastes better then. Yeah. Yeah. So the plan from here. We've got to walk past Parkwood. So if we can get into there and there's a spot, then we'll camp there. If not, we're gonna dive out off to this stockwood and try and camp there. So not far to go from here. And that can set up my brand new tent. Exciting. We're leaving the Henry VIII pub now and the path heads off through the church at Hever. Uh, Hever Church, dedicated to St. Peter. And this church was built about 750 years ago and it replaces a former early Norman church. Here then has been a place of prayer for at least 850 years. In this church is the tomb of Sir Thomas Bullen, the father of Anne Bullen, Anne Boleyn, and grandfather of Queen Elizabeth I. There we go. Nice. How cool is that? And this is the church. There's a very tall like, spire on there. Right, walking out, away from the church. We've got Hever Castle <laughs> behind this tree, behind the wall, you won't be able to see it. I don't think we'll be able to see it anywhere along this walk, but it is a stone's throw away from us. Um, yeah, what is the time? 10 to eight. So we've probably got an hour left of light, so we really need to get a move on, find somewhere, set up, while we have daylight and then we can relax again built in 1462 by thomas bullen Berlin, whose daughters anne and mary became henry VIII's wife and mistress respectively the castle was the principal home of anne of cleves for the 17 years from the annulment of her marriage to henry VIII until her death in 1557 which after it fell into decay it was bought in 1903 by American millionaire William Waldorf Astor, who carefully restored it and had the lake created. He also built a Tudor-style village to provide additional luxury accommodation, now used for conferences and other events. Yeah. We've made it to our temporary abode for this evening. Um, we are in some woodlands. We've come off of the track a little bit. Um, we have to come up bank to get to where we are so we can't see where the edge of the, the woods is anywhere around us can't see anything that's like human built um, we found this nice little sort of opening bit which is quite flat which I think will do us for the night and um, so we rich literally don't have much light left it's 25 to 9 so, gonna set up our tents, and I'm still not gonna tell you which tent I've got, but you've got until the end of the time lapse to guess what the tent is. So, three, two, one, go.
Did you guess what it is? It's the OEX Fox 1 version 2. And I must say, it looks pretty cool from the outside. I haven't even opened it and looked inside yet. So what I'm going to do is set my stuff up in there and then we'll see how much space there is. Um, and then sort of give it a first thoughts. Uh, but so far, I think it looks pretty cool. Pretty snazzy little tent, if, you, if I don't say, if don't mind saying, blah, 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 if I don't say so myself. <laughs> As you can see, we're losing light. Tom's set up his Terra Nova tent, and he's having nightmares with it. It's not sitting right. I'm not happy. He's not happy. No, he's not happy. Don't, he's not happy, Bonnie. Don't, don't point the camera at me. It's a bit <laughs> saggy. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know whether it's him setting up wrong or whether it's just they've sort of missed out points trying to save weight and just I don't know it just doesn't don't really know yeah and he's uh very jealous of my setup tonight I am. I am it's very good so yes we have the Fox one version 2 mm. in the green colour it is a banging little tent <laughs> There's a little vestibule on this side, so I've got my water and my cook stuff on that side. Um, I've got my sleeping bag. Oh, I don't know if you can see, it's dark. I'll tell you what, give me two seconds, I'll get a torch on, and then um, we'll have show you, show you properly. <laughs> How's that? That's bright enough. So I've got my normal Euro hike bag. I've got my Van Gogh pillow that I used on the last camp. Really, really comfy pillow. And I've got another new item. I've got the Climax Static V or Static 5. Uh, supposed to be good for side sleepers, which is what I am. Um, inflates, it says 10 to 15 breaths, but you've got to be a puffer fish to inflate it <laughs> that quick. It is a little bit longer. Um, there seems to be quite a bit of room at the head end, uh, which is good. I've got my clothes and whatnot up there. Um, and then, which I think is pretty cool, is they haven't, like, they've, they've used all the space you possibly can. There's another little side opening here, so you can use the vestibule on the other side, which is really handy. So, all in all so far, I'm well happy. Like, yeah, just well happy. <laughs> but, what I'll do is in the morning, I'll let you know exactly how it was. How it felt. I mean, we've got no wind or anything tonight, so I can't do a wind test. There's no rain. We can't do a rain test, but just for. I can fart near it and piss on it if you want. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> but just for um, like comfort comfortability, then I will let you know. And of course, the the new Static V sleep mat. Um, hopefully, it won't give me a dead shoulder because I seem to with the old Traverse three quarter length one. I always get a dead shoulder in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'm well happy. So I think the plan now, just I'll just wait for Tom, and then we'll sit around, we'll cook some dinner. I've got, I'm gonna have this tonight, the Wayfarer chili and rice. Um, I think I've had it before. Chili and rice can't really go wrong with that. So yeah, right, I'll uh, bring you back when we're all set up, ready to eat. Right, let's get dinner on a go. I've got me old. The normal setup that I normally use. Uh, just gonna boil some water in the bigger one of them. Gas stove, I've got some brand new gas from Decathlon. It was the last one they had in, in the sh on the shelf, so I was very lucky I got that. And then nearly bought the one without the thread on the top. Oh. <laughs> that would have been, been, been a nightmare, yeah. <laughs> and there's got these, they got these like plastic caps on top. So I just assumed that they're all the same, and then I did check before I went to the checkout, and it, the one I picked up didn't have the thread on, so I saved myself a problem there. <laughs> and then as it goes, as I was unpacking camping stuff yesterday, I found a brand new gas canister at home anyway, so I didn't <laughs> actually need one. There we go. Um, right, so I just showed you a minute ago, I'm having the Wayfarer chilling rice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil some water, put the pouch in, heat it up, and then the water from 
the pot. I'm going to put into this fire pot posh pork and beans. So I'm going to have two dinners because I'm really hungry. Nice. So the fire pot's dehydrated. Uh, it's gluten free, lactose free, serves one, 510 calories per pack. Um, I've never actually had a fire pot meal before, so this is my first time. Excuse um, me. So a hearty British breakfast. Oh, it's breakfast. Okay. A hearty British breakfast of potato and pork baked with three types of beans in a tomato sauce. That's a, that's a dinner in some places, that's fine. Yeah, posh pork, I suppose, yeah. Sa sausage and beans, for, basically, isn't it? posh pork for breakfast? Sausage and beans. And then the Wayfarer meal, chili and rice. Um, let's see what it says about this. Oh, that's gone off. Doesn't really say a lot. Heat and eat. Heat and eat. <laughs> 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 yeah, usual. Doesn't really, they've put a sticker over the calories and all that, so I can't really see it. Uh, oh well, right. I'm gonna boil some water and then tuck in to me bush tucker. Right, my water's on the boil, so I'm going to open this beer oh. that Tom has given me. <laughs> Now this is from the Hot Foundry again, the last time I absolutely hated both of them <laughs> once they gave me, so hopefully, hopefully they can sort of do themselves a bit of justice and sort themselves out. So this is called Sharp Tongue Grapefruit Pale Ale. Yeah. So this is, this is the can, pretty cool can. To be fair, the other two cans that I didn't like the drink of were pretty cool cans. <laughs> uh, so it's 4% volume, so not not amazingly alcoholic. I'm not trying um, to get you drunk. So, the Hot Foundry is an Audi owned beer. Uh, there's not really much else to tell you about it. So, I suppose we'd best open it and try it, eh? <laughs> I'll try a bit. Yeah. I'll empty my sugar out again because I forgot that you had a drink to try. Sling it in some. Oh, that looks looks some funky colour. Looks like Mountain Dew. Well, I'll do. I'll do. Right, so just pulled a bit out. <coughs> funky yellow colour. <coughs> right, let's give it a proper taste. Right, we we'll go. Oh. Hmm. not too bad. The hot foundry is slightly better than I thought they were. I don't mind that. It's quite light and refreshing. I mean, grapefruit's quite a sour fruit anyway. I probably wouldn't have another one. That's like, It's nice, but I probably wouldn't okay. choose it, if you know what I mean. I don't mind it. I could, I could drink that, but I think I'd have to drink it quickly, because I, I find with these sort of drinks after you've opened them yeah they they like the the flavors go really quick yeah and you're true left with ipa and i don't i still like think that. the best one's that do you remember that neapolitan ice ice cream where did we IPA. have that was that with gary i think that was with gary on the north downs <laughs> way <laughs> he fell asleep next to the fire <laughs> <laughs> yeah he did <laughs> that was brilliant some fireman that guy is <laughs> all right gary <laughs> i know it's meat <laughs> Hopefully we can get out of Gary again this year. He's, uh, Definitely. He works literally, I can see pretty much where he works from where I work. Um, occasionally cross paths with him. So when he's not out in the gym, come camping with us. The Quarantinas. That's it, the Quarantinas. Back out. That's quite it. a good, that was quite a good video. It's quite a funny video. So yeah, I'll put a link to that video with Gary. Mm -hmm. Give that a watch. Um, yeah, right. So, how's that? We've got champagne bubbles yet? Yeah, we do. Champagne. I think you've just put one of your pubes in my Lovely. water. Is that a badger that walked past earlier? Yeah, bodger. Old bodger the badger. On the subject of Gary as well, congratulations, Gary, on passing a 1,000 subscribers. Yes, mate, well done. Nearly forgot about that. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. Well deserved. Yeah, great channel. Do, do like your videos, mate. Mm -hmm. 
Oh. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm losing the taste going now. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it a six. Six. Yeah. Out of ten. <laughs> Three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll probably. I agree with you on that. Six. Oh, okay. There's not a lot me and Tom agree on, but yeah, we agree on this. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll finish this off, and then by then, hopefully, the water will be boiled. Welcome back, folks. The meal is hot. The first actual fully hot wafer meal I've ever had. <laughs> I normally half cook them, so the bottom's really hot and the top's really cold. <laughs> Water's in the fire pot. I must say, I got the fire pot meals uh, from Paul, Paul's Bushcraft and Camping Channel. Um, he he had, had a few, so he sold me some. So thank you, mate. Uh, we'll give it a little review in a minute. We're gonna tuck into this chili and rice. See what it's like. I can't remember what it's like. I'm pretty sure I've had this one before. Nice. Mm. Could do with a little bit more spice, but apart from that, it tastes all right to me. So, the Wayfarer chili and rice can probably have a 6.9 out of 10. Mm. It's good, but it's not amazing. So, yeah. Right, I'll chow down on this, and I'll bring you back to try the fire pot. <laughs> Does anyone know what this bug is? <laughs> He's attacked us about 12 times. He's massive. What is that? Get a stick on it, look. <laughs> look, it won't move, look. It's it's so fucking heavy. It's going to take that stick off you and hit you. Oh, look, it's just, it's just climbed on it. It's like, nah. <laughs> look at that. No, oh, sorry, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 I'm gonna kill it in a minute, seriously, because that's. Oh, look at you! It's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna. <bust. laughs> Right, I didn't film the eating the fire pot because we've just been attacked by some mutated beetle thing <laughs> <laughs> with like red things on its antennas and Massive. continuously keeps trying to attack us. Oh. Um, we keep politely telling it to move on and it won't listen. Which uh, attract is the light, in it? The fire pot meal that I had though, I made it a little bit too watery to be. Oh, the flavour of it wasn't that great. Um, I don't think the dehydrated meals are as good as the sort of wet meals, but I suppose it, they're designed so that if you need if you need to eat, you need to eat. So it's getting it's getting a five out of ten. It's having a half. Um, <laughs> what are you munching on? Um, chocolate mousse by Adventure Foods. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah, you're cold, aren't you? Yeah, no, seriously. Why is this bug? It's freaking me out. It's gone. <laughs> Good. Adios. I might have accidentally killed it. Right, I'm going to uh, go into the tent soon and then uh, sign out for the night. So, we'll see you in the new Fox 110. Right, signing off for the night in the new tent. I'm really excited. There's a lot more space in here than than it looks. Uh, it's really good. Loads of room. Don't have to sort of crunch your feet up and bend your legs and all that. Uh, 
apart from all the mosquitoes and the bug that attacked us, it's been quite a pleasant night. Um, I had shorts on out there, so I'm probably having bitten tenfold. I'm like that, I'm like a buffet to a mosquito. So I'll see you in the morning if I've got any itchy legs. Um, the alarm is set for 5.37, it's an early one. We need to get up, get out of here, and get, get on the move as soon as we can. Um, but apart from that, I think that's all I can say tonight. So good night, and we will see you in the morning. Good morning everyone, it's a beautiful morning in these woodlands, time is about 20 past 6 in the morning, uh, me and Tom have been up for about half an hour, sodding around with the cameras, um, the tent is brilliant, that's all I can say, it's uh, really comfy, I slept the whole way through, that new sleep mat was really 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 comfy uh didn't feel any lumps or bumps um i did wake up with a dead arm but i think that's just because of the way that i sleep in a tent um i soon sort of changed position and then was absolutely fine but i think that's more me than the ground mat there's no the sleep mat um tent held up really well plenty of space inside uh really cozy it's not too cold this morning. There's a little bit of, well, it's like the morning chill can feel, but it'll soon warm up. Um, so what we're gonna do is have a really quick breakfast, pack down and just head off. Uh, what should we say? Should we try and get out of here by seven-ish? About 40 minutes? Half seven. Half seven, right, okay. I'm gonna go for seven. I'll, put, I'll push you for seven. Let's see if we I'm can do it. because we've got to get a thumbnail as well. <laughs> this is the thing, you, is you, you don't know the, the yeah. areas we go to to a lot goes videos. on. videos. It takes a long time. It does. So, yeah, I'm going to get some water on the boil. I've got another Wayfarer meal, so I'll heat that up. Um, while that's heating up, then I'll pack down the inside of the tent and uh, get ready to stop packing my bag. So... Yeah, right, let's get a groove on. Right, most of my inside of the tent's packed down. Down here. And I've had breakfast cooking. I've got Wayfarer beef goulash. Uh, bit of a weird one for breakfast, but it'll give me everything I need for the walk. And I've got a options hot chocolate mint flavour to drink. So they're really nice, I like them. So I'm gonna, nice and warm this is. Oh, warm my hands. Eat this. Tom, what have you got for breakfast? Adventure foods, nuts from muesli. Bit of muesli, lovely. Coffee and hot chocolate. Salted. Mm. And then, eat these pack the tents down and we can start heading off first stop along the way we'll go through chilling stone there's a castle there um we was having a discussion yesterday what is a castle because it doesn't look it looks more like a fortified manor house sort of like Hoover castle that doesn't look like a castle um so That'd be actually quite interesting to see what it says on Wikipedia of what the actual definition of a castle is. Yeah. Interesting. But what what makes a castle a castle and a manor house a manor house? Uh, we'll have a look. Uh, right, I'm going to tuck into this and uh, pack up in a sec. So, see you in a bit.
Right, we're all packed down. I was there. Tom was there. Tom is now there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lift it as we found it. Don't be a tosser. Leave no trace. Hashtag all that bollocks. It's not bollocks, but you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to head off in that direction. Hit the path. Turn right. And then we'll probably see you at Chiddenstone Castle. Welcome back. We are now in Penshurst. Got Penshurst Place through those trees there, uh, which is massive, massive manor house built by Henry VIII. Uh, he used it as a hunting lodge when he was down visiting Anne Boleyn back at Hever. Uh, the path we've just walked down is the old coach road. It's no longer a road, it's just a path which Henry would have used to travel back and forth. Uh, I have been to Penzo's place many years ago. It's a wicked, wicked building. It's massive. But um, there's a footpath that goes through the grounds. So we'll get a bigger look at the house and uh, I'll show you a little bit more.
the entrance of Penzoas Place now, uh, the public entrance through this rather cool sort of gatehouse. Uh, the footpath goes through it and we'll be going through Killick's Bank and then next stop will be Tunbridge. So hopefully there'll be a bit to see along the way. Um, we've actually around here is where the Eden meets the Medway. So from this point onwards, we'll be actually following the Medway into Tunbridge. So it should no longer be called the Eden Valley Walk. It should be called the Eden then Medway Valley Walk. So yeah, this should be pretty nice anyway, at least walking through the grounds of Penzoff's place. My garden is better. My mum's garden pisses all over that. <laughs> Hello, right, we're stopping just by this bridge. We're gonna have a quick bite to eat. Um, and then it'll be the final push into Tunbridge. So I can take a few layers off. The sun's coming out, it's getting hot. Uh, it's about half 11 now. So we've got about an hour and a half, roughly, till we would need to be in Tunbridge, maybe a bit longer. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna have a quick pit stop and then we will continue walking. Right, my lunch, I've got a English ration pack, British ration pack, bean and pasta salad that I'm going to eat cold, because why not, so it's bean and pasta salad, butter beans and kidney beans with pasta in a tomato chilli sauce, uh, 342 calories, just keep it going for 20 minutes. <laughs> So let's open this, see what it's like. What are you having, just snacks? Protein, but I'm probably some beef jerky. Oh, beef jerky. Somewhere in there, if I can be robbed to get it out of the oh, this looks really Here it is, look. Got my Chur Outdoor Spork, the Coco Spork. Give this a go, shall we? Mm mm mm. Quite nice. Probably it would be better warmer. Yeah. So the sauce sort of all melts and mixes in, but hey, beggars can't be choosers, can they? No. And this is the lovely view we've got. Let's spin you around. Cool is that? And that's the River Medway now. Welcome back. We are nearly at Tunbridge, probably two miles, if that, hopefully. Um, but we're going through a section called Straight Mile. And as you can see here, there is a channel been dug out. And then on the other side, there is another channel dug out just behind these bushes. And the Medway is over that side. And this was channel dug by a company to build a canal to link Tunbridge to Penshurst I believe and then two different authorities they were arguing didn't want the canal some people wanted it ended up fighting and it caused the company that dug the ditches out 
um, to go bankrupt. So the guy that owned it disappeared off to America and left all his debts behind. Um, and so the canal was never finished and it is now just sort of derelict holes, sort of channels dug out. There's a bit of water in them, obviously that's just from over the years of rain and, and bits and pieces, but it is just sat there, stagnant water. Um, so yeah, but the, the canal is now broken up by two lakes, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, so when we get there, I will show you what they look like. Come across yet another pillbox. I'm not even gonna go in there. Cause it smells like piss and there's glass everywhere. But it actually looks like it's in good nick inside. Hey, we're at the castle. We've got a special guest. Katie's come to pick us up. <laughs> Thank Katie. Got here bang on the same time, didn't we? Pretty much. So we're just gonna go around the front, see the castle, open our celebratory drink, and then uh, that's it for this walk. So, uh, yeah, don't really know what to say. <laughs> 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 right, there it is. The walk's done. 15 miles of, well, sunshine, mm. happiness, rivers, history, uh, what else? More. Laughter. We've had a good time. Cheers, Tom. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Been a pleasure. Tom's drinking a brother's pink grapefruit cider, and I've got a twice as nice double IPA, 6.6%. Again, it's the Hop Foundry. Mmm. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> oh, oh frothing. I can tell already this ain't gonna be nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't like a hot foundry. Oh. But, oh well, it's a cele celebratory drink for the end of it. Yeah. The next walk with Tom will be the Medway Valley uh, walk. walk which starts from this point up to Rochester so that might be a three dayer uh, 30 miles so I've got nothing else to say to you lot so see you later thanks for watching see you next time adios amigos bye